Good day, my dear student. I am Dr. Rafiu Ibrahim Abiodun ACA, your financial accounting teacher. I'll be treating the double entry principle, accounting equation, and ledgers with you today. Financial accounting involves debiting and crediting of business transactions, but it is never done arbitrarily. It follows a fundamental principle which was brought to limelight by an Italian monk known as Luca Pacioli. This principle and others are what we are to learn today. Learning Objectives By the end of the lesson, I will expect you students to be able to state the double entry principle as given by Luca Pacioli. You should be able to apply the double entry principle to post business transactions into books of account. You should be able to manipulate the accounting equation and you should be able to differentiate between personal and impersonal ledger. The double entry principle. The double entry principle was brought to limelight by an Italian monk called Luca Pacioli in his book titled Zuma de Arithmetico Geometric Proportion et Proportionalita published in Venice in 1494. The double entry system of accounting is based on the fact that each business transaction essentially brings two financial changes in business. These changes are recorded as debit and credit in one or two accounts. The double entry principle states that to every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry and vice versa. This implies that debit the receiving account and credit the giving account. In order to facilitate the recording of business transactions under the double entry principle, the following procedures must be observed. Number one, identify the two affected accounts in every transaction. Number two, determine the account that receives value. Number three, determine the account that gives value. Number four, debit the account that receives value. Number five, credit the account that gives value. Illustration one, complete the following table, stating the account to be debited and the account to be credited. We have a table with four columns. The first column is tagged serial number, second column tagged description of items, third column accounts to be debited, and the fourth column tagged accounts to be credited. Number one, purchase of motor van on credit from Johnson 150,000, debit motor van account with 150,000, and credit Johnson account with 150,000. Number two, sold goods for cash 500 naira, debit cash account with 500, and credit sales account with 500 naira. Number three, Purchase goods worth 15,000. Payment effected by check. Debit purchases account with 15,000 and credit bank account with 15,000. Number four, paid for telephone expenses by cash, 18,000 naira. Debit telephone account with 18,000 naira and credit cash account with 18,000 naira. Number five, receive cash loan of 70,000 from Malam Kaeta. Debit cash account with 70,000 naira and credit Malam Kaita account with 70,000 naira. Advantages of double entry system. Number one, under this system, every transaction is recorded twice, so it is possible to keep complete accounts. Number two, for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry of equal amount. Therefore, total debit must equal to total credit thus making it possible to verify the arithmetical accuracy of the books of accounts by ascertaining whether the two sides become equal or not through a process known as trial balance. Number three, under this system, profit or loss account can be prepared easily by taking together all the accounts relating to income or revenue and expenses or losses, thus the difference becomes the net profit or net loss. Number four, all the necessary details about a transaction can be obtained quickly and easily. Number five, under this system, mistakes and deflections can be detected. Number six, 
a balance sheet can be prepared by taking together all the accounts relating to assets and liability. Thus, the financial position of the business can be assessed. Number seven, the total amount owed by debtors and the total amount owed to creditors can be easily ascertained. Disadvantages. Number one, under this method, each transaction is recorded in books in two stages, the journal and the ledger, and two sides, debit and credit. This results in increase of number and size of books of account and creation of uh, complications. Number two, it involves time, labor, money, so it is not possible for small business to keep account under this system. Number three, it requires expert knowledge to keep account under this system. Number four, as the system is complex, there is greater possibility of committing errors and mistakes. Number five, the tracing and locating errors are cumbersome. Let us go for a short break at this point. When we come back, we will continue. My dear students, you are welcome back to this second segment. In the first segment, we learned the double entry principle, its application in posting transactions, and its advantages and disadvantages. In this second segment, we are going to learn financial transactions and accounting equation. Let us now look at financial transactions. Financial transactions refers to the exchange of goods and services having monetary value between two parties. The financial transaction could either be cash or credit transactions. Cash transactions. This is when the exchange of goods and services having monetary value is back up with immediate payment, while credit transactions, on the other hand, involves the exchange of goods and services having monetary value with payment postponed to future time. We now have graphical representation of financial transactions. Under financial transactions, we have cash transactions and credit transactions. Under cash transactions, the cash transactions are posted to cash book and from cash book to ledgers. Under the credit transactions, all the credit transactions are posted to sub subsidiary books and from subsidiary books to the ledger accounts. We now look at accounting equation. The fundamental accounting equation, also called the balance sheet equation, it represents the relationship between the assets, liabilities, and owner's equity of a person or business. It is the foundation of the double entry principle. For each transaction, the total debit equals the total credit. The equation states that assets is equals to capital plus liabilities. The equation can also be restated thus. Assets minus capital equals liabilities, or assets minus liabilities equals capital. Assets. It can be defined as the properties or resources of a business organization, e.g. plants and machinery, land and building, premises, etc. We now look at capital. This is the total money provided by the owner to start a business. It can be equally referred to as the net worth or owner's equity. Now, liabilities. Liabilities are obligations to pay out money at some times in future. It is the indebtedness of the firm to outsiders, e.g. creditors, bank overdraft, etc. The accounting equation is the bedrock of the balance sheet. Now we look at a simple format of a balance sheet. We will draw our T ledger. On the left hand side is called the liability side, while the right hand side is called the asset side. On the liability side we have capital, you post the figure. Add net profit, you post the figure and add the two figures together, you get a subtotal. Less drawing, you deduct your drawing from the subtotal, you get another subtotal. Below it, we have current liabilities. Another current liabilities, we have creditors, you post the figure. 
bank overdraft, you post the figure. We now go to the asset side. On the asset side, we have fixed assets. Under it, we have land and building. You post the figure. Motor van, you post the figure. Add the two figures together, you get a substitute. And below it, we have current assets. And under current assets, we have stock. You post the figure. Cash in hand, you post the figure. Bank, you post the figure. Debtors, you post the figure. We will now add every figure on the asset side together. The total of the asset side must equal to the total of the liability side. Let us go for a short break at this point. When we come back, we will continue. My dear student, you are welcome back to the last segment of our series of lecture on double entry principle, accounting equation, and ledgers. In the first segment, we looked at the double entry principle, its application, as well as its advantages and disadvantages. In the second segment, we discussed the accounting equation and financial transactions. In this last segment, we are going to look at ledger deeply. Ledger. This is the principal or main book which contains all the accounts in which transactions recorded in the books of original entry are transferred. The ledger is also called the book of final entry. It can be defined as a book which contains classified and summarized permanent records of all transactions. An account could be defined as a form used to sort and summarize changes in a specific financial transaction. Classification of ledger. Number one, general ledger. It serves as a central repository for accounting data transferred from all sub-ledgers. It also contains all the accounts for assets, expenses, and income. Number two, personal ledger. These contain accounts of individual and organizations. Example of personal ledger accounts are the debtors account, suppliers, or creditors account. Number three, private ledger. These are the ledger for capital and drawing of the proprietor of the business. We now look at division of accounts. Under account, we have personal account and impersonal account. Under personal account, we have debtors and creditors account. Under impersonal account, we have real and nominal ledger accounts, debtors accounts. These are customers who are still indebted to the organization. Creditors accounts. These are suppliers who are still owed by the organization. In personal accounts. These are accounts for properties, item of expenditure, and income. It can be divided into two, namely real and nominal ledger accounts. Real ledger accounts. These are accounts for assets of the organization. Nominal ledger accounts. These are accounts for expenses, income received, losses and gains, e.g. rent accounts, discount allowed, and discount received accounts. At this point, I'm going to give you an assignment. Please complete the table, stating the account to be debited and credited, respectively. Number one, started the business with 50,000 Naira cash. State the account to be debited and the account to be credited. Number two, borrowed 5,000 Naira cash from AWARE. State the account to be debited and the account to be credited. Number three, sold goods for cash, 10,000 Naira, and banked the money immediately. State the account to be debited and the account to be credited. Number four, purchase goods on credit from ABC Nigerian Limited, 20,000 Naira. State the account to be debited and state the account to be credited. Paid wages by cash, 15,000 Naira. State the account to be debited and the account to be credited. My dear student, please visit the Lagos State Ministry of Education Twitter page at LASG Education for a soft copy submission of assignment, and for your questions. For added value on this topic, visit the following sites. 
www.accountingcoach.com. The next one, www.accountingcoach.com. Then visit YouTube Accounting Stuff. Thank you. Thank you.